People still don't believe that time under tension actually works. People think that it's just something that's totally hyped up. The reality is heavyweight training has its place, you know, simple traditional rep counting. But time under tension is starting to pave the way when it comes down to science. So in this video, I'm going to break down protein synthesis because honestly, protein synthesis is going to tell us whether something is working or not. You see, our workout's effectiveness is sort of dictated by what happens with protein synthesis. So if we have a workout where we don't elicit much of a protein synthesis response, we're not going to see a whole lot of a body composition change. We might see a performance change, but most of you that are watching this channel are looking for a body composition change. And protein synthesis is the root of that when it comes down to post-workout. We want our bodies to absorb and utilize the protein. Not necessarily consume more protein, but utilize more of what we are consuming. Hey, I'm Thomas DeLauer, the lead trainer and head nutritionist over at sixpackabs.com. Here you're gonna find all kinds of fitness, nutrition, and of course, workout videos to keep you feeling your absolute best. All right, so let's talk a little bit about protein synthesis post-workout and what we're trying to find here. So then a lot of studies that have found that yes, protein synthesis in general is heightened after a workout. But what about when we actually focus on time under tension, keeping the muscle under load for a while, versus just traditional rep counting. So an example would be time under tension is where you're focused on how long the muscle is under tension. Literally time under tension. So is it under tension for 10 seconds or 15 seconds? You're actually measuring the time versus measuring reps. You see, measuring reps can have so many variables. How fast are you doing the reps? How heavy is the weight? What kind of condition are you in? Are you exhausted? Are you aerobically exhausted? Are you out of breath? All these things come into play, whereas time under tension focuses on one pretty easily controlled variable the time that the muscle is under tension. So the Journal of Physiology actually published a study that took a look at the comparison of time under tension versus traditional rep counting when it came down to protein synthesis. So this is pretty powerful, especially for those that are lobbying for the time under tension protocols. So what they wanted to look at was if time under tension actually affected what is called the specific muscle protein fractions. But they also wanted to look at what is called phosphorylation of anabolic signaling. All of that is a fancy way of saying protein synthesis at different cellular levels. So what this study looked like is they took eight men, okay? On average, they were 24 years old, and they were all participants that have had experience with working out for a good amount of time. And they all had done some kind of lower body workout at least two times per week. So they're all pretty conditioned athletes, so pretty even keeled. So what they did is they divided these eight men into two different groups. One group did a time under tension knee extension, and the other one did a traditional rep counting knee extension. So the time under tension group focused on doing a six second contraction followed by a six second eccentric contraction. So basically six seconds up on the knee extension, six seconds down. Okay, whereas the other group only did one second up and one second down. And then they gave them 20 grams of whey protein right after the workout, okay? Well, the results were pretty eye-opening and pretty cut and dry. So they clearly found that myofibrillar protein synthesis was significantly elevated in the slow time under tension contraction group 24 to 30 hours after completion of the exercise. So protein synthesis in general was elevated. And this was directly correlated to the phosphorylation of P70SK6. Again, all that is is a specific kind of pathway that triggers protein synthesis but it was actually broken down into two more specific categories. So they found that sarcoplasmic protein synthesis, which is protein synthesis right at the muscular level, zero to six hours after the workout, was elevated significantly. It was elevated at 114% above baseline in the time under tension group, and only at 77% above baseline in the traditional rep counting group. Okay, so we know that there was an immediate increase in protein synthesis, but what about later on down the line? Because believe it or not, it's the long tail protein synthesis, the protein synthesis that occurs for one, two days after a workout that really does the magic. This is what boosts our metabolism. This is what makes it so that when you finish a workout, your body continues to burn and burn and burn because it's taking the food that you ate and it's applying it to building mass, building muscle, which takes up metabolic energy. This is what we want. So this is where it gets interesting. They found that mitochondrial protein synthesis and myofibrillar protein synthesis 24 to 30 hours after completion ended up being elevated 175% above baseline in the time under tension group and only 126% above baseline in the traditional group. All right, so there we have it, pretty straightforward. So why did this actually happen? Well, I'll give you a quick breakdown. 
The main thing is it has to do with something known as hypoxia. You see, we think when we're working out that we just have floods of blood and oxygen that are going to a specific area, right? Well, that's only true to a degree. When we're under heavy contraction, like when we're under load and we're like flexing really hard because we're contracting a muscle, we have a reduction of oxygen. Okay, hypoxia, where we're actually starving an area of the body from oxygen because we're tensing so tight. So when you're under tension for a long time, you're contracting for a long time, which means you are inducing hypoxia for a significant amount of time to a high degree. Well, this hypoxia is what allows muscles to adapt. We have to remember that working out and getting stronger and protein synthesis in general is all about adaptation. So we just force the muscle into this hypoxic state where it didn't have oxygen. And then all of a sudden, when it's let up, it's like, whoa, 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 give me energy, give me energy. And it takes all the food. And that's exactly what we want. The other thing that we have to look at is when you are in any kind of time under tension mode, you're recruiting more muscle fibers. If you're just lifting a weight up and down, sure, you're recruiting some muscle fibers and you might be getting stronger. And the muscle fibers that you are utilizing probably are getting really strong, but you're not recruiting all of them. You see, when you're time under tension, you're having to focus on stabilizing for a little bit. That stabilizing is recruiting all kinds of other stabilizing muscles that are going to get recruited in the process. Okay, this means that you're going to be able to have more muscles that are gonna to have to grow, which means more protein synthesis, which means an elevated metabolism. So more muscle mass, more body fat being burned, and an overall better workout in general. Plus, probably being able to get away with consuming more calories throughout the rest of the day. So I hope that I've made my point, and I hope that lobbying for time under tension doesn't create too many enemies out there. But the reality is, it takes a little bit of everything. But time under tension is not just for the bros. Time under tension has some true, true merit. As always, keep it locked in here on sixpackabs.com, and I'll see you in the next video.